Guys, welcome again for uh, Nutrition for Sports Performance. Um, we're now going to focus on macronutrients and timing. So we figured out, you know, what our base metabolic rate is, and we figured out how many calories we actually need to support our sport and our physical activity. So now we're going to take a better look at, you know, what exactly are macronutrients and when you need to consume them. So macronutrients are the main um, the main components of our diet. So we eat things like carbohydrates, proteins and fats in order for us to sort of sustain us through our days. So carbohydrates are things like pasta, bread, um, rice, uh, and they are four calories per gram. Then we have protein. So you think of uh, steak, eggs, you know, um, some some forms of high protein nuts. Uh, and they again are four calories per gram. And then we're going to move into fat. So when we're thinking about fats, I want you to think about, you know, cheeses, butter, cream, oil, all those things are, are considered fats. And they are quite calorie dense. There are nine calories per gram. Right, here's me going to be completely transparent. Um, if you had some bread, okay, it would largely be made up of carbohydrates, but it would have some element of protein and a small element of fat in it. If you're going to have something like nuts, that nuts are considered high in protein, they do have large elements of fat in it. And you know, if you're gonna have cheese, cheese is high in fat, but it also is quite dense in protein as well. So there's not an exact sort of measure, but these are the kind of family groups that they belong to, just to make sure that you guys fully understand that. So carbohydrates, uh, they are good for performance in regards to they promote muscular recovery and injury prevention. Carbohydrates are very anabolic. Uh, and what we mean by anabolic, anabolic means making things grow. So it will make your muscles grow, but if you have too much carbohydrate, it will also make your fat stores grow as well. So we need to think about the three T's. So the total amount, the timing, and the type. So it's good for fueling recovery. Uh, it's the primary exercise fuel source, so your body wants to use glycogen, okay, in order for, for 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 the body to perform well. And the best way to get glycogen into your system is through carbohydrates. There are multiple different types of carbohydrates. There, the fastest, it's the fastest source of en energy, and it fuels our immune cells. So it's important that we have the right amount of carbohydrates in our system. So when we say carbohydrates, you know, don't be carbophobic. You just need to learn to choose when to have carbs at the right time. If I flick back to um, some basic information about macronutrients, and this is this is something that I find fascinating. So if you were to take out carbohydrates from your diet, you would feel tired and lethargic. Uh, you may not be performing optimally, but you would not die as a result. Okay. However, if you were to take proteins and fats out of your diet, so either one of those, um, your body would not be able to function. Okay. You would perish as a, as a res result. So the body is amazing at making carbohydrates. They make carbohydrates through a concept called gluconeogenesis. So it basically means making new sugars. And what protein? What 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 we do is you ingest protein into our bodies, and we ingest fats into our bodies, and our body does an amazing thing. It makes energy, carbohydrate energy out of these two sources. So, you know, the, the good thing about, you know, proteins and fats is, you know, we can we can survive on them um, pretty well. Okay, if we if if we were to take one of these out of our diets, we would perish as a result. So don't be carb high, uh, don't be carbophobic. Make sure you you sort of plan when you're going to pick your carbs. So there are different types of 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 carbohydrates. There are high glycemic index or high GI carbohydrates. They digest really rapidly. They give you a big spike of energy. Uh, they're known as simple carbs. Uh, so they are monosaccharides. Uh, they're typically, when you think of the carbohydrate sources, think white carbs, white bread, white pasta, white rice. They include sugars. They help you recover really quickly, and they're great close to exercise. 
So what happens to our blood sugar when we ingest these? So thinking about it, you know, if we ingest the, the carbohydrate just before we work out, we get that massive spike in blood sugar, so our bodies can use that carbohydrate whizzing around our system, but it's quite short-lived. You know, it will only last maybe an hour, slightly longer before it goes back down to baseline. Then you're going to look at things like low GI uh, carbohydrates, so low glycemic index carbs. They digest slower, they're less refined, um, they give you a gradual release of energy, and they're typically brown carbs or whole foods. So think about brown rice, brown pasta. Uh, there's more fiber and um, it's good for fueling you throughout the day so you can see this if you're going to have some brown pasta or some brown rice you can see how it fuels you and keeps a relatively low peak over you know two hours two hours two hours plus so you know it, that the whole concept of keeping you fuller for longer is what those 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 uh, low gi carbohydrates are all about um, they are good for you to have during your rest day uh, great fuel sources that don't create a big insulin spike so, um, one of the questions is, based on what you've learned, can you think of more examples of white carbohydrates, or simple carbohydrates, and brown, so uh, low GI carbohydrates? So try and think of examples of high GI carbohydrates, so white, bread, etc. And think about low GI carbohydrates, so thinking about brown rice, and other items. I'm going to give you, you know, a, a minute or so to write that down. So pause the clip now. And we're back. Fantastic. Thank you very much for pausing that clip. Um, we're moving on to the types of carbohydrates. So high glycemic index. So sugars. Sugars can be useful to you around events uh, and, and training for fast energy. However, they should not feature heavily in your diet. They should not regularly make up more than 5% of your overall calories. So that's only 30 to 40 grams. And we think about 30 to 40 grams, that's probably a small packet of Haribo. So let's look at carbohydrate timing. So when is it best to have the right carbohydrates in our system? So you get up in the morning, if we're looking at a typical um, sporting event day, you get up in the morning, you're going to have your low GI, so something like porridge, slow releasing. An hour, I'd probably say 30 minutes pre-event, you're going to have your high GI. So I'd probably have maybe some Haribo, a handful of Jelly Babies or something like that. Nothing too, nothing too much, maybe eight or nine Jelly Babies. And then we move into our event. This another if we're doing a sporting event, we want to have some sort of isotonic, so sugar-based um, drink, actually intra-event, so in the event. And then afterwards, you might have some more carbohydrates, mix some protein, so high GI carbohydrates, in order to promote that recovery uh, and get that protein into your system. So it might be, I mean, I, I used to, when I was playing rugby, have um, LucasAid Orange, it's a really super sweet mix of some chocolate protein, shake it all together and it tastes like Terry's chocolate orange. And I'd drink that immediately post, post training session. Then after that, I'd go back into low GI. So during high intensity sessions and matches, fuel with high GI, fast releasing energy sources, but water, squash or electrolytes for the, for the easier sessions. So if you're just in a normal training day, you don't need that big spike of carbohydrates. So event carbohydrates, again, I kind of said, you know, you need to have low GI two to four hours pre. The half hour before the event, you are going to be moving towards high GI. And in the event, you're going to be having that high GI, so sugar, simple sugar rich food sources. So you want to have between one and four grams per kilogram um, one to four hours before the, the, the training event. So it depends on how intense or how long your workout is, is how you're going to sort of fuel for that. So carbohydrates during exercise, how much should you have? Okay, so during exercise, you want to aim for 30 grams. So that could be three to four Jaffa cakes. Notice that's not lots and lots. A 500 milliliter sports drink, uh, one large banana, two small cereal bars, um, two carb gels, um, 
35 grams, a handful of jelly beans, or seven jelly babies. So, you know, seven jelly babies isn't a great deal. And you'd barely notice eating that, but that's kind of what you want to be looking at having, you know, intra, so while you are performing. If you're boxing, that might be, you know, a bit of you know, some Lucozade or some isotonic drinks in between your actual bouts to help you recover. I'm going to pause it there, guys, before we move on to the protein aspect.